this violin is in tune. Tuning a violin basically means making it sound exactly like this. Quick example of why it's important to tune. I'll play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on this in tune violin. Now, I'll detune one of the strings. I'll play the same song, but now one of my strings is out of tune. See, it doesn't sound like the violin from the beginning of the video. Now I'll play Twinkle Twinkle on this out of tune violin. I played correctly. I used a nice bow hold. I put my fingers in the right spots, but it did not sound like Twinkle Twinkle because of the out of tune string. That's why we need to have the violin in tune. Some disclaimers before we start. One, you might break a string. That just comes with playing a stringed instrument. Whether we're tuning it or playing it or just leaving it in the case, there's always a risk of breaking a string. Actually, that's why as a string player, I always have spare violin strings, spare guitar strings, because it does happen. But that's Pretty much the point of this video is I'll teach you how to do this without breaking a string. Actually, if you follow all the instructions exactly, it's very unlikely that you'll break a string, so don't worry. That said, this video is aimed at parents, teachers, and at older students. We do need some amount of strength and control to do this safely and properly. We also need the focus and patience and attention to follow all the steps exactly without rushing or anything. So I usually don't recommend students start this until they're seven, eight, nine years old. Students can watch, of course. They'll start learning, they'll start watching you do it, and they'll absorb that information. But I say leave the tuning to someone with strong and steady hands and a lot of patience for now. And second disclaimer, if you're new to this, I do recommend getting help your first time. If you know someone who already knows how to tune a violin, or a viola, or a cello, or if you know musicians in general, they'll be able to do it for you the first time so you can watch them, or at least over video chat or something, they can walk you through the steps. Wait, special disclaimer for guitar players. Sorry, guitar players, I can say this, I'm a guitar player too. No offense, but just because someone knows how to tune a guitar, does not mean they can tune a violin. Watch out, it's actually a lot different. So even if you know how to tune a guitar or a bass, still watch this video so you learn all the violin specific tips. Now, let's talk about pitch. Pitch is how high or low a sound sounds. Now, I'm not talking about volume. I'm not talking about how loud or quiet a sound is, I'm talking about how high or how low it is. Here's some examples. Here are some high notes and some low notes. Here are some notes that are going higher or they're going up in pitch. Here are some notes that are going lower or they're lowering in pitch. We're going to use a tuner to help tell us if our strings are at the correct pitch or if they're out of tune. But before the tuner makes sense, we need to know a couple things. The names of the violin strings and the musical alphabet. First, the strings, from high pitch to low pitch. E, 
A, D, G. Or from low to high. G, D, A, E. So again, the pitch is from high to low. E, A, D, G. And from low to high. G, D, A, E. Try to memorize those names. It'll help when we're actually tuning if you just have those notes in your head. You can also refer to the beginning of this video where I have the notes on screen. Next, the musical alphabet. In music, we give each note a letter name. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Just those seven letters. Moving forward in the alphabet gives you higher pitches. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And if you go even higher than G, the alphabet just starts over again at A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A, B, C, and so on. Going down in pitch, we go backwards in the alphabet. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And going below A, you get another G. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And even lower, G, and so on. One more thing. There are some pitches in between those letters. We call them sharps and flats. Flat, or this lowercase b symbol, means lower than. And sharp, or the number sign hashtag symbol, means higher than. These are separate notes. They're different pitches. For example, this string on the violin is D. It is not D flat or D sharp. It is exactly D. This will make sense when I show you on the tuner. By the way, now you know what the black keys are for. Now back to the violin. To tune a violin, we change the pitch of each string until each one sounds the way that we want. For stringed instruments, tightening a string makes the pitch higher. And loosening the string makes the pitch lower. Again, tightening the string makes the pitch higher. Loosening the string makes the pitch lower. Now, be careful. There's an age-old saying, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It does not always work with the violin. So, you need to look, think, and listen while you're tuning so you really know what's going on. Take a moment and really look at the pegs and the strings. How are the strings wrapped around the peg? Which direction do they wrap around? How are the strings held into the peg? And imagine yourself tuning first. If you turn it one way, what will that do to the string? Will it pull it tighter? or will it let it go looser? Always know what you're about to do before you actually do it. And always, while you're tuning, listen for the changing pitch and keep an eye on the tuner so you know which direction you're going as you turn. Now, we're almost done with the theory part of this and we're about to start tuning. But before I demonstrate, let me give you four tips specifically about using the tuning pegs. 
Number one, make small movements. I'm really serious, so I'll say it again. Make small, tiny movements. As small as you possibly can. How small? It kind of depends on your violin and on your strings. But just to give you a rough idea, a 45 degree turn is a lot. That's a risky move. So seriously, we're going for tiny, tiny movements, as small as you possibly can. Number two, don't tune the string too high. When you raise the pitch or tighten the string, that's when you're at risk for breaking a string. If you lower the pitch, you're loosening the string, and actually there's not much risk involved with that. So be safe and stay on the low side until you're sure of where you are. I'll show you what I mean when we get to the tuning examples. Number three. Sometimes when you're tuning, after you're done tuning and you let go, the peg will slip back to where it was. So tip number three is push the peg in while you tune it. That way it will get wedged in. That's how these uh, pegs stick into the violin. They get wedged in there. So let me show you an example. I need to tune my G string back up. I got it, but it slipped right back out. So while I'm turning, I'm pushing in. You can hear it getting wedged in. And if I did it right, when I let go, it'll stay stuck in there. So that's tip number three, push in while you turn the peg. Sometimes, on some violins, you do have to press quite hard. You'll, you'll get a feel for it as you go. Um, you are allowed to press in hard if you need to. Not so hard that it actually gets stuck, but firmly enough to where it's um, not slipping out again. That's allowed. That's, there's a difference between turning too far and pushing in. You are allowed to push in quite firmly, but when you're turning, turn very, very small. Number four, let the string ring out while you tune. In other words, make sure you can hear the note changing as you tune it. Uh, that will give you important clues, like whether you're going up or down, and also it will let your tuner hear what you're doing so it can display the information back to you. So for example, I'm tuning the G string. I'm letting it ring as I pluck. Here's what I'm not doing. Pluck, tune. This is like driving blind. I have no idea how far I'm tuning it. I need to pluck, let it ring. Let it ring as you tune so you can hear what's going on and so your tuner can hear what's going on. About the fine tuners down here, they're a lot simpler. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, it does apply here. Since they naturally make smaller adjustments than the pegs, you have a lot less to worry about. There's a lot less risk with these fine tuners. You can actually turn them quite a bit. You can give them a few turns as needed. Just watch out that you don't go so loose that they come out, or you don't go so tight that they start digging into the wood of the violin. Again, look closely, try to figure out how they work, and you'll realize what you're doing when you're making these movements. If your violin is only a little bit out of tune, then you're in luck. You can just use these fine tuners. It's a lot easier and less risky. But sooner or later, every violin does go out of tune so much that you need to use the big pegs. Okay, finally, time to tune. I'll go through one round of tuning really quickly so you can just watch and listen to how I do it. And then I'll go through multiple examples, uh, different strings, different situations, different tuners. Hopefully we'll cover every situation that you might find and I'll give you some tips as I go. So here's the app that I use on my phone. Um, a lot of people I know use this one, Pano Tuner. Not Piano, Pano, P-A-N-O. 
Uh, you can get it for free. And this is a tuner. Let me show you how it works. Now see, when I play a string, it recognizes It knows that's G and it's pretty much in tune. That's almost D. It's closer to D flat than it is to D. And we learned that flat means lower than. So my D is too low. I need to tune it up. Now it's a D. That's right in the middle of A, good. And that's E, close enough, as long as you're in the green there. So it'll display the note that you're trying to get. So make sure you know the names of the violin strings that you're going for, and pay close attention. Don't get confused by those flats, or there's a way to get Pano Tuner to display sharps instead. So let's try a couple different situations. I'm just gonna randomly detune all my strings and I'll go through all the steps. Try to figure out for yourself before I give you the answer. I see that G is too low, it's to the left. Well. Depending on the app, you don't know if it's going to be left or right, so that's why we learned about the flats. It's closer to G flat, which is lower than G. That means my G is too low. It was only a little bit too low, so I was able to use the fine tuner. Let's check D. If you look closely, you'll see it's close to D flat. I need to bring it up to D. See, I'm letting the string ring as I turn, and I had to turn that one quite a bit. Let's check A. Use your knowledge of the musical alphabet See if you know which direction I should go. Okay, right now my string is about a B flat, which is right between A and B. And it is too high, so I need to bring it down. I'm gonna go lefty-loosey on this fine tuner. I'm out of room. I haven't gone low enough yet, but I can't turn this thing anymore. So I need to use the big tuner. I'm still too high, so I'm gonna use the tuning peg. And remember with the peg, I'm going to turn as small as I possibly can. I went too far. Now it's lower than A. I can use the fine tuner to bring it back up. There we go. Now E. That's very low. That's almost a D. That's like two letters away from E, so I think I need to use the big tuner. But even though I know it's far away from E, I'm gonna move it as tiny as I can. See, the smallest movement that I could possibly do was still a full letter. And I do not wanna to go too tight on that E string. See, I'm constantly checking, just going little tiny bits at a time. Now I'm very close, so I'm gonna to switch to the fine tuner. There we go, and let's see if this sounds like a violin.
Yep. And you'll start to learn that sound the more you do this. Now I'm going to switch to a different situation. We're going to do that all over again. I'll start from E this time. It's closer to F. F is higher than E, so I need to go down. You might have seen, for a second, the tuner thought it was an E, but I kept playing and playing just to make sure, and it said, oh, actually, no, it's not. So sometimes you have to double check. Next, the A string. It's very close. Honestly, you could probably keep it there, but why not get perfect? Let's go on to D. Do you think it's too low or too high? It's closer to E flat, so it's too high. Uh, I can use the big one. I'm not really afraid of going lower. So again, remember, keep plucking as you're tuning to make sure you hear whether you're going the right direction. And really look at the string while you're still new at this. Look and see which way it's wrapped around so you know for sure you're turning it the right way. Here's G. That's very far away from G. Can you tell which direction? It's all the way below an F. We need to go way up. If you need to move far up, then Use the big tuner, but still move it a tiny bit. See, with just three tiny little turns of the tuning peg, I got up to G. Now I'm just going to make it perfect with this little fine tuner. Now, let me show you one special situation. E is good. A is good. D is good. That's supposed to be G, but it says A. Here's why you need to know the musical alphabet. It says A. So let me tell you a mistake that someone might make. You're thinking it says A? So, oh, I need to tune it all the way up to G, right? Because A is low and G is up high. But I think we know now, if I tune this up all the way to G, it will for sure break. Remember, if you have an A, a G can also be the next note lower than A. And remember, going higher or tighter is a little bit risky. If you're ever in doubt, go lower. Let's try that. So I'm loosening. I, I don't want to tighten all the way up to the next G seven letters away. Why don't I just loosen it to the G that's one letter away from A? There, now just with a little bit of loosening, I got to the G that it should be. Let's check and see if it sounds like a violin. Yeah, that's about right. Now, this is a different app. It's called Pitch. It was another free one in the App Store. So, it looks a lot different, but it actually has all the same information. So when I play my E string, the app displays a big E. It knows I'm trying to tune my E. And underneath it says eight cents sharp. 
Um, a cent is a tiny fraction of a musical letter. You don't really need to know that, but you do know the word sharp. If my E string is sharp, that means it's too high in pitch, so I need to lower it. That's what the line is on this app. As I lower it, the line should go lower. And I went too far, I need to bring it back up. Now this app is very accurate. It's actually too accurate. Three cents, you're probably not really gonna hear that. So with this app, I, I don't really try to get perfect. I try to get close enough. Let's check the A string. So the app knows I'm playing the A string and it tells me exactly how far away I am from A. I'm sharp. Four cents sharp. Let's see if I can get it perfect. Just a tiny turn of the fine tuner got me there. My D is two cents sharp. Honestly, that's good enough. My G, you can see the line is low and it says flat. That means my G is too low. I'm going to bring it up. Oh, went too far. So that's a different app. Um, you can see it looks much different, but it's all the same information now that you know those terms. Uh, honestly, I don't use this one. Um, for me, it's a little too accurate. I use the Pano Tuner. So if I can give you a good tip, just get that Pano Tuner app. Um, I'm just showing you that different apps will act differently, but they all have the same information. And there's tons of them out there. You can just find one that you like. And the last thing I'll show you here is this is my actual tuner. It's a physical tuner that I bought. Um, this was my high school and college metronome tuner. And it doesn't have batteries right now, so I can't show you. But it does the exact same thing. There's a little meter that shows you how far away you are from your note. And it can help you tune. And now they have clip-on tuners. That's a tiny little tuner that clips onto your violin. And some people actually just leave it on there, on their violin or guitar. So that's another thing you can buy. Um, same exact concepts. It's just, it tells you the note and how far away you are from the note. Flats and sharps, same thing. Uh, honestly, for now, you can just get an app on your phone or a tablet if that's easier for you. So that's pretty much it. That's how to tune a violin. It takes some practice. You'll get faster and you'll get better the more you do it. But for now, just take it really slowly and really carefully. Use the tuner. Follow the big tips. If you're using the pegs, turn small, tiny movements and don't go too high. Let me know if you have specific questions or if I didn't cover anything. But in general, just follow the tips and I think you'll be fine. All right, have fun.